When you are creating remarketing lists in Google Ads, you are most likely familiar with the main remarketing categories that we can create. There's website visitors, app users, video users, and customer lists. We're not just stuck with those main four categories, even though there are a decent amount of options under each one. We can create custom combination lists, and that's going to use and, or, or not relationships to, what it says, make combinations from all these different audiences. Now, we can only use audiences from these main four categories, but it can really help you expand your reach if you want to take a few different audiences and combine them together, or it can help you narrow your reach to a finer audience if you have enough traffic to do so. So we're going to jump into Google Ads, and I'm going to show you how you can create these custom combination lists to really make the audience that is going to be best for your campaigns. To create audiences within Google Ads, we need to head to the Audience Manager, and that's where I already am. So at any point to find Audience Manager, you need to head over to Tools, and then you'll see Audience Manager lives under the Shared Library column. But like I said, I'm already here. And before we create a combined audience, we need to know what audience options we have within Google Ads. At the bottom of the list, we see Custom Combinations. Of course, we're going to get there. But these are your main four audience categories that I talked about within the intro of this video. There's Website Visitors, App Users, YouTube users, and your customer list. Let me go under each one because there are preset options underneath each of the main categories. For website visitors, we can create an audience for people who visited a certain page, visitors of a page who also visited another page, visitors of a page who did not visit another page, page visits during specific date ranges, and page visits with specific tags. So already within this one, we can create some sort of custom combinations, but they're just combinations within this website visitor category because we do see page URL contains and, and then we can also go down and click the or. So if all you're looking to doing is just create a custom combination from just page visitor audiences, you can do that within this main category. But let's head back and look at the next category. And that one will be app users. This account is not working with an app, but you would want to have that linked and sending data back within Google Ads. There are three main audience types under the app user audience category. The first is creating an audience for users who took specific actions within the app, and you would be able to define those, going down to all users of an app, and then creating audiences off of people who have used the app recently or they haven't used the app recently. And then you could define the window of how recently that user did use or did not use your app. But then going back to Audience Manager, let's look at YouTube users. For YouTube, here are the options of audiences that you can create. I'm not going to go over each one because we actually already have a video about YouTube remarketing lists. So if you want to get a little bit more in depth, specifically just on YouTube users, go check out this video. But you can see there's a variety of audiences we can create from video and channel interaction. And then back to Audience Manager for one more audience. And that is going to be creating audiences from customer lists. With Customer Match, you can upload a CSV file into Google that can contain a combination of these column headers you see right here, depending on if you're uploading unhashed or hashed data. There are limitations on who can use customer lists, but for those who are eligible to use them, it is a great way to create new audiences to target or possibly exclude within Google Ads. So now that we understand the main four audience categories, I want to go into custom audiences. And as we already saw, the last option under this list is custom combination. If you were paying attention on the main audience manager screen that we had previously, you would notice that we didn't have a lot of audiences created. This is just the account that we have for our YouTube channel. We don't do anything else with it. So the only audiences we have created are YouTube user audiences, and then Google Ads automatically created those similar audiences. So that's why when I went into the custom combination section, it explains why we have such limited audience options to create a combined list. This is exactly why I wanted to go over your audience options first, because you need to create those separate audiences before you can go in and use a custom combination. So because of that, I'm gonna hop into a different account that has a lot more options, just so I can run over a few examples of some audiences you might wanna consider. So one combined audience example that I've used actually for an exclusion would be creating an audience off of anyone who could potentially be a current customer. So if I go under website visitors, I can go ahead and choose all converters, and I know there are a few of them there, I'm just assuming this is the right one, but, in this particular situation, I may also want to add people who have purchased from the app. For this particular client, there's one Google Analytics property for the website and a different Google Analytics property for the app. So if I'm only creating an exclusion audience from converters on the website, I'm missing out on a good chunk of users who have recently purchased from our app. And depending on the range of how long you set that cookie, 
you can create a couple audiences in a few of these different categories that fit within that specific date range that you're trying to avoid if these are recent converters. Let me close everything back up, get rid of these selected audiences, and then we can go over another example. In this one, you may want to consider using as an exclusion or a possible targeting option. First, I'm going to select one of my customer lists. This is just a demo, assuming this is the most recent customer list that I imported into Google Ads, but there's a website visitor audience that I typically create for many of my clients if it makes sense. This account has a lot of website visitor audience, so luckily we do have the search function to look up this particular audience. We have an audience in place for anyone who clicked on the login link on this website. People who are trying to log in are most likely current customers. Now, if you're thinking, well, your customer list should take care of that, yes and no, because good luck getting a 100% match rate on your customer list that you're uploading into Google Ads. If you're uploading thousands of customers within one list and you're getting a 100% match rate in Google, I can't tell if I wanna shake your hand because you're awesome or avoid you completely because you're a witch, because pretty much that is impossible. So because I know my customer lists aren't gonna satisfy all my current customers, I can try to create a combined list of other actions our current customers can do that only they could do and then include them into the mix. I may wanna go back and add certain app actions from the app user audience that I have created and include that as well. And that's fairly easy to do if you know there are only certain actions a user can take on their app if they are a current customer or paid for a certain level of service within that app. So now I can use this combined audience potentially as an exclusion if any of my campaigns are focused on pure new users or depending on how these audiences may be segmented, I can create a combined audience to potentially upsell a certain subset of my current customers. Combined audience of users who perform possibly a top of funnel action like downloading a PDF, signing up for a newsletter, create a combined list, and then market to them again with that deeper conversion action. And one thing I wanna mention for this particular audience is my website visitor audience. This is an audience for people who have clicked on the login link on this website within the past 540 days, the maximum amount of days we can have for our audience within Google Ads. And I wanna bring this up because this audience was not created within Google Ads. I used event actions that I created within Google Tag Manager, and then we can go into the audience definition section within Google Analytics to create audiences from those specific actions. If you're interested in doing more event-based remarketing, we have a video of how you can do that right here. But what I'm trying to say is that the audiences that you create within Google Analytics will fall under this website visitor category as well that you can use for combined audiences. It might give you a lot more options than just the URL-based ones within the website visitor category. And the condition that I used for these past two examples that we went over was the or condition. And there I have it highlighted right here. So I'm defining this audience as saying, if users visited any of these audiences. I'm telling Google to create an audience if a user either clicked on the login link within the past 540 days or they are matched within this customer list. They only have to fall within one of these audiences. It's gonna help me create a larger audience. Now let me close this out, go back to the main combination section, and I'm gonna show you a different example. I now wanna change the audiences to and. But before I explain that, we're gonna select our audience combination first. Now I'm gonna choose YouTube videos. Now I'm telling Google Ads, create an audience off of users who watched these videos. And since my condition is an and condition, a user has to watch both of these videos within the past 30 days in order to fall within my audience. They have to do two actions for me to go back and remarket to these users. So now you can see when we use the and condition when we're creating this combined audience that most likely our audience size is going to shrink noticeably. Depending on how much traffic your site gets, you may or may not want to use the and condition. But as always, the more specific we can make an audience, the better we can customize our ad creative and that user experience for this audience. Maybe we do have a customer list off of everyone who signed up for a newsletter, but maybe they haven't purchased anything recently. But we also know that they interacted with the form on our site because we have events created with that with Google Tag Manager, as well as an audience that's created within Google Analytics that is fed back within our Google Ads Audience Manager. If I can create an audience off of people who have signed up for a newsletter, so that shows some interest in our brand, and they've interacted with a form on our site but they haven't completed it, that's a very high intent audience. I'd rather remarket to that user first than someone who just visited my website. Again, that is a very specific audience, but if you have the traffic to do it, it's worth testing. Hopping back into our account, you can see under the type column that combined list, it's its own type. And if we look at the size of the audiences for search, YouTube, and display, 
I'm ignoring Gmail because Gmail's gonna go away soon. We see all of them are under 1,000 users. Makes sense, I just created this audience. And that 1,000 mark is important. Let me hop into Google Ads Help to show you why. Google states within their help section, and I'm highlighting it right here, Google Ads will not serve a combined audience if it is under 1,000 users. And Google can automatically pause that campaign or ad group using that combined list if you're trying to use it before you hit that 1,000 mark. So before you add any combined audience to a campaign or an ad group, make sure it has at least 1,000 users first. It'll save you a lot of headaches. But now let's hop into a campaign and I'll show you how we can implement these new audiences. I went ahead and pretended to create a new ad group and already I'm in the audiences section. So from there, when we create an audience, you can choose if you wanna leave it targeted or have it just as an observation audience. I can then choose browse and then go under remarketing. Here we see our combined lists and then I can add the YouTube combined audience. On the flip side, yes, I understand I'm within the same ad group. You're not gonna do this. If you wanna use that combined list as an exclusion, the process is the same. If you recently used it, there it is. I could check it there or I can browse again, go back into remarketing. There's my combined lists and there's my YouTube combined audience. So now we have a better understanding of how we can create custom combination lists within Google Ads. Depending on how much traffic your initial audiences create from the four main categories that we first talked about, as well as which condition you use when creating your combined list, you now see how focused you can get with a specific audience or potentially how you can expand a certain type of audience. This will just give you more options to test for both targeting and exclusions. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.